So to match the right chi-square distribution with our goodness of fit statistic, we need to consider something called the degrees of freedom of um, the goodness of fit calculation. Okay, so the number of degrees of freedom um, for which we use this symbol here, pronounced as new. Okay, so it's like a V, but pronounced as new. Now the number of degrees of freedom is equal to the number of cells take away the number of constraints. Okay, let me just explain that idea uh, in a little bit more detail. So referring back to a previous example, the number of cells uh, in this earlier example is six. We're making six comparisons, okay? Um, but our number of degrees of freedom is the number of cells take away the number of constraints. Now, because we know that um, in this instance, the dice was rolled 120 times, okay, we know what the total expected is, 120, and we know that the total observed also has to be 120. So because um, we know the total adds up to 120, then um, once we know all of the other values, so once we uh, know all of the first five, the last value here uh, is already certain because we know it has to add up to 120. So that um, counts as a constraint that we need to take away. So the number of degrees in freedom in this instance would be equal to five, okay? Um, so that's what it means by the number of constraints. So back to our definition, number of degrees of freedom, uh, number of cells, take away number of constraints. Okay, so um, we take, in this case, it would be six, take away one to give us five for our degrees of freedom. Uh, more on that as we uh, progress through. So to match up the right chi-squared distribution with the correct goodness of fit calculation we need to make sure that we use the chi-square distribution with the same number of degrees of freedom um, as defined above okay so number of degrees of freedom number of cells minus number of constraints whatever that number is for our degrees of freedom is the chi-square distribution that we need to choose, okay? Um, and that basically dictates how we match up which chi-squared member to go with our goodness of fit test. Hopefully that will become a bit more uh, obvious once we start to look at some examples. The next detail to consider is sometimes we need to combine cells because um, the chi-square distribution is only a good approximation to the goodness of fit if none of the expected values fall below five. So if any of the expected values do fall below five, we must combine frequencies in the table to ensure that they are greater than five. This is demonstrated uh, in the example below, okay? It's usually uh, frequencies adjacent to each other in the table that are joined together because if one value is low, the next one's also likely to be. So we'll see that played out in, the, uh, in our first example in a second.